So we're now going to talk some more about sampling distributions and statistical estimation. So just kind of a few random things. So first of all, the sampling distribution of our sample variance. So I don't even think the sampling distributions are only for the sample mean. We can talk about the sampling distribution for any sample statistic. We can talk about it for the sample mean, for the sample median, for the sample mode, for the sample variance, for the sample generation. There are some that we have nice neat formulas for. So we learned about the sample mean. Now we can learn about the sample variance. So if we have x1, x2, and xn, those are basically just saying we'll take n observations from a sample from a normal population. So this only works if you start with a normal population with a mean mu and a variance sigma squared. Then the sample variance, so our sample variance is s squared, which we do an s instead of a sigma because it's for our sample, has this distribution. So it'll be n minus 1 times our sample variance squared over our population variance. We'll have approximately what's called a chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. This isn't something we're really going to talk about much in this class. It does come up if you take the 5,000 level classes. Okay, so now sampling distribution of our sample mean x bar when we don't know sigma squared. So everything so far has been if we knew our population standardization for the sampling distributions, but we often don't know that. So let's see what happens. So we know we can estimate our population mean mu with our sample mean x bar. That's our best estimate. And that the standard deviation of x bar is sigma x bar equals our population standard deviation over the square root of n. However, if we have to estimate our population mean mu, we probably don't know the population standard deviation sigma either. So it doesn't make sense to use sigma in our calculations. So instead, we'll estimate sigma with our sample standard deviation s. So we'll estimate sigma with s. But as soon as we do that, we have to switch from using the standard normal distribution to using what's called the t distribution. So it's very much like the normal distribution, but just slightly different. It's what we call the t distribution. So if x1, x2, up to xn are observation for a sample from a normal, no, this is a normal population, with a mean mu and an unknown population variance, which will still be sigma squared, we just don't actually know what it is. Then if we standardize the sample mean x bar, remember to standardize before it was always z equals x minus mu over sigma over square root of n. So we'll standardize it, sorry, x bar minus mu. That's how we standardize for sample mean. So it's x bar minus our mean over s because we don't actually know our st population standardization is the s because we're estimating with our sample over square root of n. So as soon as we use that sample standard deviation instead of our population standard deviation, we switch to a t distribution. Okay. Now this t distribution has what's called degrees of freedom, which again, we will talk about later. We will yet use the t distribution a lot in this class. So just so you know, this is exact. It's an exact t distribution. If the population is normal, but even if your population is not normal, it will still be approximate. This will still be approximately correct if n is at least 30. Just like everything else, we want n to be at least 30. Okay, so now we can estimate our population mean mu with our sample mean x bar. And the standard error of our estimate, which we might abbreviate SE or standard error, you'll hear that term in law and statistics will be equal to s over the square root of n. So your standard error just kind of tells you how close your estimate is likely to be. So we call it standard error so we call it standard error instead of standard deviation because we are using s instead of sigma. So anytime we use our sample standard deviation instead of our population standard deviation, we call it standard error. Basically, it's just, again, some way of telling you how close your estimate is going to be. So standard error 
tells you how close your estimate is likely to be. So how close it's likely to be compared to the true value. Because of course, estimates aren't usually exactly right. And sometimes they're even far off. It's just how, so standard error tells you how close you're likely to be to your true estimate. So this is an example. Suppose we wanted to estimate the mean height of student in this class. We're going to draw a sample x1 through x6 of heights of students in this class. So we'll do a sample size of six. Now I did this in one of my in-person classes. We can't do it on the online class very easily. So we'll use their data. So first, what is the population? Do we know the population mean or variance? Well, in our case, we have about 80 students in this class. So the population would be all 80 students in this class. And we do not know our population mean or standard deviation or variance for that matter. So we don't know anything about that. So now we can look at our actual data and it's in inches. So our actual data when I look asked six students was 76, 78, 66, 72, 69, and 65. So that is our sample. So what is our estimate of the population mean height? Well, your estimate of your population mean is just your sample mean. So we'll do 76 plus 78 plus 66 plus 72 plus 69 plus 65 all over 6, which gives me 71. Now to find our standard error of our estimate. Well, first I'm going to use my calculator to find the sample standard deviation of s equals 5.29. Okay, you can also put in Excel or something. We don't need to find the standard deviation by hand, that takes too long. So now I can find my standard error. Just a sec. So the standard error of our sample mean is again equal to remember s over the square root of n. We Use our calculator to find s of 5.29. And n was 6. We took a sample of 6. So this gives me 2.1596. So that is my standard error. Now remember, we said our standard error tells us how close we're likely to be. So we could say how much is our estimate likely to be off by or how close is it likely to be. We could say something like our estimate of 71 inches. for the population mean is likely to be within about, remember everything here is estimating, so everything's kind of about 2.1596 inches of the true average. So we don't know exactly what it is. We're estimating 71 inches, and we know we're likely to be within about two inches of the true average. 